So the 80s uh, was good. For USA Volleyball was the best in the world, 84 and 88. Uh, such a small pool of talent. A few players from, two players from uh, Ohio and the rest from Southern California. And uh, the rest of the country didn't play, but that pool made us the best in the world. Indoor volleyball seemed to be really hot throughout the United States. Uh, more juniors were playing, more boys, more girls. The women's team won a silver medal in 84 and was strong going into 88, although it didn't medal in, in Seoul. And it just seemed to be a, the sport that caught a lot of people's attention for the first time. It trained four years for the Olympics under Ari Selinger, who's you know, just as a legend, but you know, as a reputation, is just the hardest coach ever. The Olympics get boycotted. They don't go. I mean, I, I can't imagine, you know, the heartbreak of training that hard, that hard, I mean, hard, unbelievable, and not getting to go. So they stayed together. I mean, the majority of that group stayed together, did it again for another four years, and went and won a silver. And um, I just, hearing, that it just makes you think, God, you know, that is exactly it. I mean, that, that is the attitude that you need to be the best. Once the Soviets announced the, boys, the boycott, I think we raised our expectations a little and our hopes certainly because the best team, uh, arguably the best team in the world wouldn't be at the Olympics with the Soviet Union. Some other great teams would be missing too, like Cuba and Poland and Bulgaria, and so it definitely made for a, uh, a significantly weakened tournament, and that's why some of us stuck around to play another four years, because we wanted to play in an Olympics that, uh, that was a more, uh, I guess, a truer representative of the world's best. You know, I don't think anyone was ready for them to win the gold medal at that time, and especially with some of the guys they had on that team, how young they were. And uh, those guys became icons of our sport and went on to win the World Cup, the World Championships, the gold medal in Seoul. And the 80s was definitely the golden era of volleyball for, for the USA. Uh, people have asked me, the 84 team won a gold medal, uh, the 88 team won a gold medal, and uh, which team was better? And I would say that probably the group in 86, which had a, uh, the nucleus of the 84 team and the guys that won again in 88, that was probably the most talented uh, team that I'd been around. And so that team wasn't the biggest, wasn't the strongest, wasn't the fastest, but for sure it was the toughest and it was the best. The d biggest difference between the national team now and the national team then was that we had a full-time training program all the time. Um, we were able to locate in San Diego. We had the, both men's and women's teams there on a full-time basis. There, we didn't really have players that uh, participate overseas in professional leagues like they do now, so we were able to train all the time. And what it did is it gave us a great opportunity to build a team rather than just trying to put an all-star team together and play, which is what happens right now. They moved the program to San Diego. I joined back up with the program, trained with them, got in trouble with the coach, <laughs> ended up leaving the team uh, by 1982 and then from that point on for me it was all beach volleyball. The Olympics in my mind finished. My opportunity for, for a medal or, or playing in the Olympics was over. At least that's what I thought. You know we show up about 10 minutes early, 20 minutes early. We relax here, listen to music, talk talk to each other, you know, and then the coach comes in, you know, we do the game plan, as well as our personal plan, you know, say each, each one of us is a personal plan after our team plan, and then we go out and have a very intense warm-up, you know, that's the most important thing, so, uh, gotta be intense, gotta be intense. Yeah, we're just trying to get in the match mode now, just trying to, you know, get comfortable in matches, we've become a real good practice team, a high level, and, uh, the hard part is transferring that into the matches, so the Russians uh, haven't seen anywhere close to what we're capable of, so we're hoping tonight is the night that we can uh, break through and uh, play like we can play. You know, I'm not sure we know what kind of team this is, really. I'm not sure it has a character or it has a, uh, I don't know, persona. Um, I hope it develops it. We, we've been a good team. We've, we've beaten some good teams. Uh, we've moved way up in the world rankings. We're you know, fifth or sixth in the world right now. 
Um, I think that's a pretty legitimate spot for us. But, you know, clearly over the last three or four years, we have not played uh, the number of matches against the better European teams on a year in and year out basis as I would like. Front guy helping more than more balls are going to their opposite because in rotation three. It's amazing to me when I, play, I played, you know, three years in Japan, Pro League, four years in Italy in the Pro League. Uh, with some of the best players in the world, Andrea Johnny, Kantagali, Bernardi, Kazakov, the seven foot from Russia, Guido Gordson, MVP of the 96 Olympic Games. I mean, these are guys I all played with. And you think, well, it'd be difficult. How's your team get so good? And we only practice a couple weeks before the season starts over there. But good volleyball players know how to play volleyball. You know, the systems are pretty similar. Yeah, yeah a step here, a step there, a ball. Okay, I need one ball a little higher, one ball a little faster. But, you know, if you're good, and most all those guys are from the very best team in Italy to the last place team. I mean, they all have all stars. It's just volleyball is volleyball. I mean, you pass, you set, you hit, and you can adjust things real quickly. I think it's